Welcome to this section in Mastering Elasticsearch 5.0 entitled Monitoring. In this section, we start by looking at how to monitor Elasticsearch from Kibana. We'll identify a few key metrics and get a feel for where to go and get around the user interface. We then move into the important process of setting up a dedicated monitoring cluster. Welcome to this video in Mastering Elasticsearch 5.0 entitled Monitoring from Cabana. With the Elastic Stack up, running, and presumably secure, it's now time to discuss monitoring. Monitoring in Elasticsearch, which is handled by XPAC, is the process of viewing performance data for Elasticsearch, Cabana, and Logstash. Monitoring is a prepackaged part of Elasticsearch and, therefore, installs agents on Elasticsearch, Cabana, and Logstash by default. With so many moving parts combined with the regular inflow of new data and interaction with existing data, it's important to stay on top of cluster performance to ensure efficiency, security, and proper functionality. Now let's take a look at some important metrics to help you monitor Elasticsearch. Let's start with cluster health. Monitoring Elasticsearch starts with evaluating cluster health. From this, you can get a 30,000 foot view of what's going on in your cluster, such as the stats of shards across nodes, as well as an overview of the nodes. A cluster status of green is good, yellow warning, and red means your cluster is down. Having gotten this far in Elasticsearch, we know this. However, the challenge is to figure out why. These metrics should help you to do just that. Now, to grasp the concept, of how well your cluster is doing, it's imperative that you keep track of the CPU. Okay, for instance, a spike in CPU usage could prompt you to, or should prompt you to, look at the JVM heap. This could be the result of higher garbage collection activity or other things. As for memory usage, if you were, say, running at about 60% usage, you'd be doing fine because there is memory left over for file system cache. For Elasticsearch as a Java application, we concern ourselves with JVM memory usage. As a search engine, Elasticsearch relies heavily on disk I.O. This is a key metric to watch as low or reduced I.O. is a direct reflection of issues with search performance. In addition, based on whether your cluster is write heavy for log analysis or read heavy, this metrics could change. For example, high writes relative to reads means that you need to optimize for indexing more so than for queries. The opposite holds true for read heavy clusters where optimization needs to tilt towards queries. You also want to remain cognizant of how much disk space your cluster, nodes, and indices are using relative to the overall available space. This gives you a good idea about if there's a need to scale out, let's say add more disk space by adding more nodes, or if a given index or node is requiring an unusually large amount of disk space, in which case if it's an index that has cold data or data that's no longer being searched, you could consider archiving it or deleting it to free up space. Most important thing is that first you know and then you act hence the need for monitoring. We've seen this over and over up to this point. The JVM heap usage and garbage collection metrics is a very important one to watch. This involves monitoring garbage collection and memory usage. When looking at JVM garbage collection, you should notice a healthy sawtooth pattern on an active cluster. This indicates consistent garbage collection patterns where it goes up, comes down. Latency. This is query latency and has a direct impact on user experience. Needless to say, analytic queries are generally expected to have higher latency than search queries, but even still, looking at periods of increased latency and tracing it back to the JVM heap, garbage collection cycles with CPU usage, and disk I.O. can help you to figure out the root of the problem. If a cluster is experiencing slowdown or frequently crashes, the things I will instantly look at are the cluster health, 
Then I go to the shards relative to total shard count and the size per shard. I also look at the index count, size, um, latency for queries, etc. These are good preliminary starting points. Now let's view monitoring from Cabana. Okay, from the monitoring screen, let's just quickly go through this. And here we have the overview, which gives us our cluster health. And it gives us the Cabana health. If we had log stash, we'd have the same thing. We have a general overview, which gives us our search rates, indexing rates, indexing latency, and search latency. And these are important because this gives us a, a, a direct indication of the overall search performance. Going back, if you come here over on the nodes, you'll see that it has the overall amount allocated and then the amount available. And here it says 18.88% is available, which is obviously not good. This is a test system, not a production system. But this is one of those things you want to keep an eye on. And the other thing would be the JVM heap. Here you see 42.72% usage. Again, as you can see here, I only allocated two gigs. In fact, that's the default for this heap. On a production system, it would be much higher, but you'd also have a lot more data. So you definitely want to stay on top of the JVM heap. If you click on the node, again, you have more details. And it's just pretty much a different layout. One thing to keep an eye on here is you have your total shards and you have unassigned shards. Uh, this is not good to have 150 unassigned shards with a total of 302 shards. That should be balanced out. But the most important thing is you have these metrics here to show you, okay, I have this number of shards. That will affect your um, cluster performance as well. Here, when you go to the detailed overview, you see you have the JVM heap. It gives you a clean chart to show you in real time exactly how much of the JVM heap you're using. And it gives you, you know, the top line, which is the maximum, the two gigs that's allocated for that. So you can have a, a visual indication of you know, how close you are, how much you're using relative to the total allocation. Same thing with CPU utilization here. We've got CPU utilization in terms of percentage. It tells you, say, okay, this clear graph shows you what percentage of the CPU you're using. The great thing about the way it's set up on Cabana is it's easier for you to engage in exploratory analysis of what's going on by simply putting your mouse at the point you want to look at and you want to explore. And then you can look at the other charts and they're also focused on that exact area. So if you see high CPU utilization, you can look right up and look at the JVM heap. And if you have high CPU utilization, but the JVM heap is, the JVM heap most likely is going to be high. But here, you have to be careful also because you have to pay attention to the Y axis. This is 10%. So the chart may show it increased, and it did. But the overall usage is only 10%. So that's not high. When you look at latency, again, this directly affects the user experience. So it shows you in milliseconds the amount of time. And it index memory, how much memory the index takes up. And as we can see here on this particular uh, note, the index memory is being total index memory. 19.1 megabytes, really small. You can also go to the advanced setting. And the advanced setting, you have a, an even deeper drill down where you have more data. Say, for example, you got the JVM heat combined with garbage collection data, which is very important because, as I've stated before, high JVM usage combined with long garbage collection cycles directly indicate that your heap is probably too big. And here we have a list of the indices. 
all the indices we have on this particular cluster. So if we were to click on the book index, a very small index, but the important thing is that you can see how much memory that particular index occupies, the size of that index, search rate, etc. It is highly recommended that when in production you set up a separate monitoring cluster. This ensures that if your current cluster for some reason isn't available, you still have access to monitoring data. 